Hi there. Hi, can you hear me? My name is Nurse B. You're at the hospital right now. Yes, you had a pretty nasty hiking accident and somebody found you and called the ambulance for you and they brought you here. How are you feeling? Confused? Yes, that is understandable. Um, the doctors have run a couple tests and they have ruled out any serious brain injury, which is obviously very good. However, they have diagnosed you with a concussion. Yes, just a concussion. And like I said before, my name is Nurse B. Yes, B as in the insect. And my job here today is to perform a neurological exam on you to basically test your senses and get a feel for your condition right now, okay? You have been out for a good couple of hours now, so this exam will give us a good indication of your condition, as well as any underlying issues that may impact your recovery, okay? So, first of all, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, okay? Let me just grab my book here. Um, could you tell me your name, please? Thank you. And could you tell me your date of birth? Okay, good. And could you tell me the date today? Thank you. And could you tell me what day of the week it is today? Great, thank you. And could you tell me either the current Prime Minister of the United Kingdom or the current President of the United States? Very good, thank you. So, like I said, those are just some preliminary questions, but just those questions on their own give us a good indication of your condition right now. See, with some cases of concussion, there can be some memory loss, and asking questions about your identity, and what day of the week it is, and facts such as Prime Minister or the President can give a good indication as to your sense of self and your awareness of time. And also with the identity, we did have to ask you yourself about your identity to confirm whether what we had on record was correct. Um, the person who called the ambulance for you actually didn't know who you were, so when you came to us, we didn't know who you were, so I must preface, we usually respect our patient's privacy and we don't usually go through their belongings, however, this was a unique case and we needed to know if there were any underlying conditions you had, any existing uh, problems, health problems, so we did go through your bag, we did go through your backpack, in order to find any information relevant to us as medical professionals. So as well as uh, any identification, we needed to find out if you had any medications, any uh, EpiPens, any uh, medical cards that detailed any conditions you have, and we did find an ID for you. and asking you directly about your identity does help us find out whether that ID card was in fact yours or whether it was uh, friends or relatives. So you passed that with flying colours, I have to say. <laughs> so with those preliminary questions out of the way, we can get into the exam. and. 
I know a neurological exam sounds quite scary, but like I said, it's just a test of the senses to see whether your senses have been in any way impacted by a fall. So, first of all, you don't actually have to do very much for this first part. Um, all I'm going to do is take this light and just shine it on your face and examine your skin to see if there are any wounds, scrapes, cuts that the doctor may have missed. And if there are, I will patch them up as necessary, okay? And for this, you can just look straight ahead, okay? Thank you. I'll just examine your face now. A very beautiful face, I must say. <laughs> I must also say I am very jealous of how good your skin is. You either have a very good skin routine, very good genetics, or both. <laughs> Although, I'm inclined to think you're just naturally this pretty. <laughs> okay, it looks like you're all good. Looks like there's no missed wounds, so... Oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> I do see a little scrape on your cheek here. I will just bandage that up for you now, okay? Okay, that is all bandaged up, so now we can move on to the next part. So, for this next part, I'm just going to be shining the same light into your eyes, okay? And I know that doesn't sound very pleasant, but it won't be for long, okay? So, I'm going to shine the light into your eyes, and for this first one, again, I just want you to look straight ahead, okay? So let's look in your left eye first. Good, now your right eye. Perfect. And now I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time I want you to look at the light, okay? And again, it's not going to be for long. So Let's start with your left eye. That's it. Okay, good. And now your right eye. I don't know if you agree, but eyes always look very beautiful when you put them under light. And yours are no exception. <laughs> Okay, good. No problems there. Okay, so now, could you smile for me, please? Very beautiful smile, thank you. And now, could you poke your tongue out, like, ah? Good, good. And now, I'm just going to test your hearing, okay? What I'm going to do is just snap my fingers like this in either your left or your right ear and all I want you to do is tell me which ear you heard me snap my fingers in, okay? And it won't be very loud. I can't snap my fingers very loudly anyway. So let's start with the first one. Which ear was that in? Good. Now the next one. Good. And what about this one? Good, good. And what about this one? Well done, well done. I did try to catch you out. But you did not fall for it. Well done. 
So, now I'm going to just whisper a number in either your left or right ear and I want you to tell me, firstly, what that number is and secondly, which ear you heard me whisper it in, okay? So, let's do the first number. Eight. Good! The number eight in your left ear. Well done. The number five in your right ear. So, now that the hearing portion is done, we can now move on to a visual test. Now, all this is going to do is just really test your dizziness, since with a concussion, a common side effect is dizziness, so we just want to assess how bad that dizziness is for you right now, okay? So, all I'm going to do is, for this first one, place two fingers just a distance away from your face, my left index finger on the left side of your vision, and my right index finger on the right side. And all I want you to do is just look quickly back and forth between my fingers and tell me when you feel any dizziness, okay? You can start now. You feeling dizzy? Okay, that's fine. And tell me when that dizziness goes away. It's gone? Good. So now let's do one more. And this time it's going to be looking up and down, okay? So again, I'm going to be placing two fingers in front of you. Uh, this time my left index finger is going to be at about eyebrow level. Uh, just above your eyebrow level and my right finger is going to be below at about uh, the bottom of your lip in line with the bottom of your lip okay and again all I want you to do is quickly look back and forth between my fingers and tell me if you feel any dizziness okay you feeling dizzy okay that's fine and tell me when that dizziness goes away. Okay. And did one get you more dizzy than the other? Was looking left and right worse than looking up and down, or were they both the same? Both about the same? Okay. So now let's move on to assessing your cervical spine. I know that sounds very scary, but all it is is basically checking the range of motion in your neck, okay? Because with concussions and with a fall such as yours, um, there is the possibility that the neck can be strained. Oh, sprained. Where are my words? There is a possibility that your neck can be sprained. So all we're doing is checking your range of motion, seeing if you have any difficulties or any tightness, okay? So first of all, could you just tilt your head over to the left so that your left ear is coming close to your left shoulder? Good, and is that causing you any pain? Okay, good. Uh, you can tilt your head back up for me, please. Thank you, and now could you do that on the other side? So. Tilt your head over to the right so that your right shoulder is coming close to your left ear. Thank you. Any pain? Okay, good. Now could you uh, just put your head back to normal? And could you just look over to the left? And then over to the right. Thank you. And now what I'm going to do is just come behind you and just feel the back of your neck okay and what I'm feeling for is any sort of tightness okay and all I want you to do is just keep your head straight look straight ahead and I'm just going to place a hand on your forehead like so and I'm just gonna 
come on behind you and just start feeling the back of your neck, okay? Okay, feeling good. I'm not feeling any tightness, which is a good sign. Okay, let me just note that down here. Okay, good. Okay, so next I would like you to just put your arms out and have your palms facing down towards the floor. Thank you. And now, could you put your palms towards the ceiling? Thank you. And could you close your eyes? Good. And now open them again. Good. And now, what I want you to do is just, I'm going to put my hand into yours, okay? I can put both my hands into yours and all I want you to do is just squeeze my hand as hard as you can, okay? Yep, go on, as hard as you can. Thank you, and you can let go now. Okay, good. So now, what I want you to do is curl your hand into a fist and move your forearm towards you and then away from you, as if you're curling a dumbbell. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so let's start off with your left hand. So curl your left hand into a fist and move your forearm towards you and then away from you. Towards you and then away from you. Is that causing any pain? A little bit? Okay. Okay, you can stop that now and have your hand stretched out, palm facing to the ceiling like you had them before. And now we can move on to the other arm. So, same thing. Curl your right hand into a fist and move your forearm towards you and then away from you towards you, and then away from you. Is that causing you any pain? Same amount as the left arm, okay. So, now, could you just stretch your arms out again? And this time I'm going to just move your arms manually, and here I'm gonna be checking just general range of motion, and seeing if there's anything that I should be concerned about, okay? Well, I'm not feeling anything that I should be concerned of, so I'll just note that down. Now you can rest your arms down, just on your lap. Now we can move on to the, I think, final part of this examination, which is the balance test. So for this part, I'm going to need you to stand up for me. Thank you. Yep, just stand normally like that. And are you feeling any dizziness doing that? No? Okay, good. So now could you just turn towards the left for me, please? Yep, just turn to face that wall. And could you stand with your heels together as if you're a soldier being called to attention? Thank you. And now all I want you to do is just walk towards that wall in front of you and come back. And I'm going to be walking alongside you. So in case anything happens, I will be right by your side, okay? So let's start walking together now. Good. Now let's turn around and go back. Good. So now I'm going to ask you to do the same thing again, 
except this time I want you to walk with one foot in front of the other, as if you're walking along a tightrope. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So, again, I'll be right by your side. I'll walk alongside you, okay? So, let's start walking now. Good, good. Okay, good. Now let's walk back. Great, perfect. You can take a seat back down now. Yes, that is the neurological examination over. And I must say, you are in a much better condition than we first anticipated. Yeah, you did have a pretty nasty fall, so we were preparing ourselves for things not to look good, but you seem to have gotten very lucky. But obviously we can't let you go just yet. Um, we would like to keep you here for the rest of the day and keep you here overnight just so we can monitor your condition and see if anything worsens, okay? Thank you for being so understanding. I am aware this is probably a very stressful time for you and I understand you've been very confused, but we are just trying to do what's best for you. And it's good when we have patients who see that. So, what's going to happen next is I'm going to hand over this result sheet to the doctor and Actually, while I'm out of the room, did you want me to maybe make a call to anybody? Um, you did come here on your own, so are there any friends, family members, or any sort of relatives I could call to let them know where you are? Okay, um, I have your medical record here. Um, are they an emergency contact? They are? Okay, let me just check the record, see if we have their number. Okay, we do have a number written down for them here. Um, is this number still correct? It is? Okay, good, great. Um, I'll phone them and I'll let them know where you are and what's happened. And also while I'm out, would you like anything to eat or to drink? Maybe a glass of water? Yeah, a glass of water? Okay, I'll get that for you as well. So I'm going to head out now and give that result sheet to the doctor, make that phone call and get you some water. And please stay here. Um, feel free to look around, but I would recommend just sitting or lying down. Um, we don't want you to overexert yourself, especially after what's happened to you. So if you just sit tight here, I will make that phone call and get you a drink, okay? <laughs> 